we talked about orthogonal sets of vectors in the last video. That's a set of vectors where every single vector in the set is orthogonal to every other vector in the set. So just a collection of orthogonal vectors. And we talked about how if you have an orthogonal set of vectors, they can be a basis for whatever they span. Given that you have that basis, you might want to be able to write some other vector in the space in that basis representation. So let's talk about how you go about doing that. So I'm going to assume that I have some subspace, we'll call it W again, and that's a subspace of Rn, and this is my orthogonal basis for W. So I, everything in W can be written as a linear combination of these R vectors. And I'm going to go ahead and pick some arbitrary element from W, which means that I know I can write it in this form, right? By definition, it has to be a linear combination of these basis vectors. So the question is, if I'm handed some x, how do I figure out what this set of coefficients, the ci's, are? So how do I go about computing the ci if I'm just handed some x and told, oh, this is in my subspace, figure out kind of what these coordinates, these coefficients are. All right, so how do we figure that out? Well, it turns out there's a very simple equation, and here is the equation. To figure out what each of the coefficients is, I just compute the ci as x dotted with ui and then normalized by ui dot ui. So actually, if you leave the x out, this really just looks like a unit vector in the direction of ui, right? We talked about how you can normalize vectors doing that. This right here is really what we call a projection. So what we're doing is we're taking x and we're projecting x onto the normalized vector ui to find the coefficient, how much of x lies in that direction. In the next video, we'll actually very carefully define this. We're actually gonna give this a definition and give it a formal name and we're gonna call it a projection or an orthogonal projection. For now though, let's go ahead and work an example. If you just kind of trust me that this is, you know, kind of the right operation to compute the coefficient, let's practice kind of the mechanics of this projection operation. And then in the next video, we'll backtrack and carefully define what we mean. So let's just kind of do an example now to have kind of a concrete thing in our mind that we can picture and understand how it works. So let's say I have this basis, and this actually is a basis for R3. So here, kind of the subspace W is all of R3. And I'm gonna go ahead and be given the vector X equals six, five, 10. So I have this vector X, obviously X is in R3. So I should be able to write X as a linear combination of these three vectors, right? So how can I figure out what the coefficients are? What number do I multiply u1? What number do I multiply u2? What number do I multiply u3? So I need to be able to write x as some linear combination of these ui's, and the coefficients are this equation right here from our previous slide. So let's just get practice doing this computation. So I need to compute c1, c2, and c3. C1 in the denominator is going to have U1 dotted with U1. So let's go ahead and compute all of the kind of normalization factors first. So U1 dotted with itself is just going to be 1 times 1 plus 4 times 4 plus 1 times 1. So 1 plus 16 plus 1 gives me 18. Very similar computation for U2 dotted with U2. We'll have 4, 0, and 4. Add all that up, you get 8. And then u3 dotted with u3, we get 4. A negative 1 times a negative 1 is 1. And 2 times 2 is 4. Add all that up, and we get 9. So I kind of have all the denominator terms computed. What about the numerator? We need to compute x dotted with u1, x dotted with u2, etc. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take x dot with u1 at the start. So it's going to be 6 times 1 is 6. 5 times 4 is 20. 10 times 1 is 10. Add all that up, I get 36. And then we'll go through these last few computations a little quicker. Very simple dot products. So these are all my numerator terms. So now I can go ahead and compute C1. So C1 is going to be 36 divided by 18. And I've already computed those factors, which is 2. And C2 is going to be a negative 8 divided by 8. I've already computed those factors. 
and then C3 is going to be x3.u3, that's 27, divided by u3.u3, that's 9, which is 3. So these are the coefficients that I can weight each of my basis vectors by. So I can write x as 2u1 minus 1u2 plus 3u3. So that is how I can represent x in this orthogonal basis. And we've done that using this concept of projecting x onto ui. We got a little practice with that projection operation. In the next video, we'll go ahead and provide a rigorous definition of what we mean to project. We'll actually draw some pictures and some sketches to get a more intuitive feel on what that concept means. So check out the next video.